All right. Well, let's get going. We are going to look at two parables today. They're not very long parables, but I think that, well, I wanted to put them together. Parable of the wise builders and the foolish builders. You know, you guys have sung a song about that. The wise man built his house upon the something or other. The what? I like that. The rock, right? And then we're going to do the rich fool. And because there's foolishness in both, and speaking about the wisdom that we need to have. So, you no, know, I, like, I like that story. The rich yeah. Fool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to screen sharing and we will start reading. Come on, machine. What's going up here? There we go. I thought something bad was happening. All right. So the first thing we're going to read is in Luke chapter six. It's just 49, 46 through 49. It's not a very long bit. And I am going to get this little verse that happens uh, at the beginning of the story. Mr. Dan. Yeah. Um, we watched a video, but, and there's this guy that thinks he found Noah's Ark. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah, we've seen a movie like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are looking for it. Yeah, some people even faked it. Yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me. People trying to get famous in some way or another, right? Well, we're going to read here in chapter 6, 46 or 49. And it's coming out of a sermon. Luke 6 is a lot like Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. And those are the Sermon on the Mount chapters. And you'll notice if you read chapter 6 of Luke that there is a lot of similarity. But they call this the Sermon on the Plain because at the beginning of the chapter it talks about how he went onto a wide plain. And they call this the Sermon on the Mount because at the beginning of chapter 5, it says that he went up on a mountaintop. But a lot of the preaching material is similar, as well as this little bit here. Jesus says, And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? What's his question mean? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Why, what's he talking about? Does that make sense? It's like, sort of like saying, it's sort of like fakely praying. Yeah, that's a good way of doing it. Here is George, uh, George, here is Jesus, because I was saying the word Jesus and the word Lord at the same time for some reason, it came out George. And he <laughs> is saying, why? Do you call me Lord? Is Jesus Lord? Yes. yes. Jesus is Lord. So he's asking, why? Oh, let me, let me do this. Why are you calling me Lord if you don't obey me like I'm a Lord? Doesn't that make sense? A Lord is like a master or like a king. Jesus is Lord and master and king. And that means we need to listen to what he says, and not just listen, but do what he says, right? <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but don't do what I say? And now he's going to give him a parable about it. Everyone that comes unto me and hears my words and does them, I will show you who he's like. He's like a man building a house who digged and went deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when the floods rose and the stream broke against the house and could not shake it because it had been well builded. Have you guys heard the story like this before? I'm sure you've heard it. No, I like, I like how it says dig and builded. Yeah, you like the old translation? All right, so here we go. Jesus is saying, why do you call me Lord if you're not doing what I say? Does your mom want you to do what she says? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're supposed to obey your mom. If you don't obey your mom, you're not treating her like a mom. If your dad tells you what to do and you don't listen to your dad, if you don't obey your dad, you're not treating him like a dad. And so what Jesus is saying is, if Jesus, not me, if Jesus is Lord, then we got to do what he says. And this is what it looks like. Here is Jesus, and he is preaching out the words, right? He's preaching out the words. 
And if somebody hears them with their big ears, all right, it's going right into his ears, okay? If somebody listens to Jesus' word, let me zoom, zoom in. I call it zoom in. All I'm doing is moving the thing up. If somebody listens to Jesus' words, it's like a guy who, when he's going to build a house, the first thing you do is you got to get the dirt out. And then you find the bedrock on the bottom. Now, there is a house getting built near us, and we've been looking at it. And the first thing they did was they, they dug down. They got all the dirt out so they could find this rock foundation. And now they're putting in cinder blocks or pouring cement, and they built it up really strong. And then they have the beams, and then here's the house, and we're just going to do a really simple house look, okay? And so here it is. Here is rock. And that's the foundation, and they built it solid on the rock. And so here is this house, and it's got windows that seem, well, the windows seem a little bit weird, but you get the idea. Here is this house, and it's built on the rock. And what happens in the parable? What comes after the house is built? The winds and the, the rains and the floods, right? So mm -hmm. now we get to draw winds and rains and floods. All right, so here... Um, water is pouring out of the sky in big glooshes. You can also do rain, but it's more fun to do big splashes. And here's the floods coming in, and they're rushing up against it, and they're smashing into the house. And the rain, is it going to wash away the house? No. Because it's, it's got roots, right? It's not just on the ground, the house is also underneath the ground and it goes deep and it has these roots and it's almost like it's tied in deep. Kind of like a tree. If a tree has a really deep tap root, it, it might lean in the wind, but it won't get pulled out. And so this house is surviving because they listened to Jesus's words, okay? I think that that's just a fun story to draw. All right, let's get back and we will do the other little bit of this. But he that hears and doeth not, of course, that's old, old language for, he who listens to Jesus and doesn't do it is like a man that built a house upon the earth or just on the dirt without a foundation against which the stream broke and straightway it fell in and the ruin of that house was great. We all knew that this is how the story was going to go, right? Now we get to draw a house getting destroyed. That's what's fun to draw, right? It's, it's fun to draw a house that survives, but really what's a lot of fun is drawing a house that falls apart. So here's, I'm going to draw the ground as orange, okay? Here's the orange dirt, okay? And then you just start building your house. And if you're looking at it from the outside, do these houses look the same? No. Why? Well, no. well, you could you see underground? Maybe if you if you saw them building this house, you knew what was underneath it, right? Yeah. But if you're new to the neighborhood and you can't see underground, these two look they look pretty much the same. Yeah. How is the only way you can tell which one is founded on the rock and which one isn't founded on the rock? When the winds and the waves come in, and they're going to sploosh this thing, and it's going to, here's the raindrops and the splashes, and it's the floods, and the water, and now we get to draw the destruction. Um, in the story, it collapses in, right? So you can draw, like, the, the roof is down here. You can draw arrows, like it fell down that, in that direction. And you can draw crumple lines. The door is out here on the ground in front of it. And the windows are broken. There's glass everywhere. And the roof line is smashed. And there's boards and plaster. And, um... This isn't a part of the story, but I'm going to draw it anyway. There's explosion lines, and it all washes away. And, you know, I'm drawing the explosions to just show, like, 
this is what's happening, right? It's all getting washed away by this rain. Now, here is the big thing to realize. We are all living in a time of a crazy coronavirus, right? If you didn't get your life prepared, the virus might wash you away with fear or with sorrow or with any number of things. But if we have placed our trust in God, oh, this is a hard time. This virus is not fun, but I trust in God. I'm pretty sure that I can be safe. Hold on, I gotta close the window because there is a loud lawnmower. So if we aren't relying on God, if we're not used to God, there's so many things that can wash us away. And so Jesus is trying to say, look, look, if you call Jesus Lord, Lord, that's a great way to start. That's a good foundation, but you've gotta do more than that. You actually have to build your foundation. You have to listen to Jesus's words. We have to do what Jesus says. If we don't do it, we're just gonna get washed away. And the next parable is a good example of that kind of idea. So now, if you're reading in your Bibles, we're gonna be looking at Luke chapter 12. This parable was a really short one, so I wanted to put another one with it. And we're gonna look at the parable of the rich fool in Luke chapter 12. We're gonna start reading in verse 13. The parable shows up uh, right around verse 16, but I'm gonna do a little bit of the backstory in verse 13. What we're gonna see here is, well, one of the things that Jesus talks about is that we should put, not put our treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, but to have treasures in heaven. And this is going to be about somebody who is wanting their treasures on earth. And out of the multitudes, one said unto Jesus, Master, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. We have two brothers, and they both want the inheritance. What's the inheritance? You know what that is? Money. It's the money. It's when daddy dies, who gets the money? And they're fighting over it, okay? There's the, those are lines that mean they're fighting. And they want Jesus, he wants Jesus to say, Let my, tell my brother to give me my money. Is that the kind of thing that we're supposed to pray to Jesus about? Dear God, dear Jesus, tell my brother to give me my money? Uh, can you see that, the, that his thinking is a little bit wrong? He wants to divide it fairly, right? We don't know. It just says, tell him to divide it. But anyways, let's see how Jesus responds. That's a good point, Jack. Um, but let's just see how Jesus responds. But he said unto him, man, who made you, me a judge or a divider over you? And he said to them, to everybody now, take heed and keep yourselves from all covetousness. What does covetousness mean? We're supposed to keep away from it. What's it mean? Wanting something. Wanting. Can you think of other words? Have you heard of lusting? It's all, it's only mine. Oh, like only mine thinking? Yeah. Only mine. That's a good one. Uh, it's kind of like, um, it's not like that you're not sharing, but it's about taking, it's about having, it's about um, you see somebody else's toy and you're just so desperate for it. So Jesus is saying, be careful about that. These guys fighting about the money, Jesus is saying that's covetousness. Beware of all kinds of covetousness. And so Jack, you made a good point. Maybe he wanted to divide it fairly, even if he was wanting it to be fair, Jesus is saying, be careful about all kinds. That's a good point, though. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. A person's life isn't about the amount of junk you own. That's hard to understand when you're a kid, because if there is a friend who has more toys than you, Sometimes it feels like that's the cooler friend. They have more video games. They have more stuffed animals. They have more toys. They have more TV shows. They have more everything. It feels like, well, I guess they're a better person than me. It can feel that way. Jesus is saying, 
absolutely not. He is saying, no, life is more than junk. And now he's going to teach a parable about it. And he spoke a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Basically, he had fields and fields and fields, and there were so many crops. Um, we're just going to say that these are the crops, weird lollipop vegetables, okay? I don't have the time to draw a good vegetable. They brought forth plentifully, and he reasoned with himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have not where to bestow my fruits. He get, basically, I grew too many lollipop vegetables, and I don't know where to keep them. Isn't that a great problem? To have too many, uh, to, to be a farmer that grows too much? It's kind of a funny problem, isn't it? So he's all nervous. What am I going to do? What am I going to do with all my lollipop vegetables? And he said, this is what I will do. I will pull down my barns. So that means he had some barns, right? Barn. Um. Here's his barn. I'm going to tear it down. So let's see. I'll draw him holding a hammer. <laughs> like he's going to like he's going to break his barn down. I will pull down my barns and I will build greater barns. I will build greater. So now you got to draw a barn that's even bigger. And just to make sure that we all know it's cooler, let's put little decorations on it. See how this is a prettier barn? I don't know. Those are weird decorations. I don't know what I'm thinking, but this is, it's shiny, it has flashy lines on it. This is like the cool dude barn, okay? I don't know. Do you get what I'm trying to say? He had a good enough barn, but he's gonna build greater. I will pull down my barns and will build greater, and there I will bestow all my corn and my goods. That's where I will stick all my lollipop vegetables. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have much goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. He was so nervous. Oh no, I have too many wonderful things. What am I going to do? I know what I'll do. I'll break my barns. I'll make bigger barns and I'll make life even better because now I have more stuff. And the reason we know that this man is selfish thinking is that he says to himself these words. Soul, you have much goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. So what is he going to do now? Now is that he got it, What? Is, he gonna, is it like do sinful things? Well, that's the interesting thing. It doesn't have to be sin, but whenever you see that phrase, eat, drink, and be merry in the Bible, often it's connected to people doing sinful stuff. Isn't that scary? Hey, Daddy. So I'm drawing him, just a second, Jack. I'm drawing him content and fat, meaning he's not just rich. Now he's rich and fat. And he says, eat, drink, and be happy. I'll put happy instead of merry. All right, Jack, what were you going to say? Instead of burns, they're doing big things. They're full of green. Yeah, that's a good way of drawing it for modern day, right? And so here's the thing. Um, did he do anything sinful by putting his food in a barn? No. No. But what is he thinking about? His life it, on it, earth. What? Is he thinking about his life on earth? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Is he thinking about um, life with God? Is he thinking about how can I help people who are poor? Is he thinking about, I have so many lollipop vegetables, why don't I give some away to people who are hungry? No, he's just trying to figure out a way to eat, drink, and be happy by himself. And then look at what happens. But God said to him, you foolish one, this night, tonight, your soul is required of you, and you, the things that you've prepared, whose shall they be? So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So the very night that he filled his barn so full 
that he didn't ever have to work again, do you know what happened to him in his sleep? He died. <laughs> he died. So now you have to draw this. That was dead. The very night that he was done with all that work and he made himself so rich and he had all that he needed, he died. Well, that happens, right? Sometimes people get sick and they die. But why does God call him a fool then? Does God think that every person that dies is a fool? No. Why does God call him a fool? Because he thought that was... He was thinking of himself. Thinking of himself? Yeah. What were you saying, Jack? Because he thought that all the stuff that he had was really important. Yeah. He thought these barns and these toys and these lollipop vegetables, that's the important stuff. And God says, you fool. That's not important. The last line from Jesus is really important. And I underlined it, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get out. I've been using yellow when I have a line that I think is really good for us to remember. So I'm going to use yellow again. So is he that lays up treasure for himself and isn't rich toward God. If you keep your own treasure, right? If you lay up treasure for yourself, your own treasure, it means that you're not rich toward God. It means that you really aren't thankful to God. It means that you aren't grateful to God. It means that you're not glorifying God because guess who you're interested in? Yourself. It's possible to have a lot of money and be a Christian, but the point is, are you keeping your own treasure or are you rich toward God. That's what we need to think about. And that's really what both of these parables are talking about. This guy listened to Jesus, and he didn't just build a really pretty house. He built a house that would last and help him for the rest of his life and all of eternity in heaven because he listened to Jesus. The rich fool didn't care about God and lost everything. Didn't listen to Jesus and lost everything. All right, well, those are the two parables. Do you have any questions before we're all done? Nope, I don't think so. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. I'm going to sign off, and I will see you, I guess, next week. God bless, y'all.